Hey guys, and welcome to D6 Evolution. I'm Lewis, and I'm here with the deceitful Darkin, Archon Skari. That's right. How are you doing, Archon? I'm very well, thank you. How are you over there across the pond? I'm very good, very good indeed. Very excited to be talking about something that's a bit of a new phenomenon in the UK, uh, and that is the ITC missions. And a question that we get asked a lot, and I uh, certainly know when I started playing ITC, it was a question I was asking a lot. How the hell do you pick secondaries? How do you know what's good? Um, and how can you make that a, a big part of your game? Well, you first have to write them on your sheet. <laughs> it's a good thing. You don't want to remember what that's you're right. doing. You definitely don't want to be forgetting. <laughs> Well, guys, uh, if you haven't listened to us before, um, we're a, a, a YouTube channel that does competitive 40k play, uh, videos. So check us out. Um, you can check some of our other videos out. And if you like, please subscribe. Um, we've just hit 10,000 subscribers and we're keen to keep going. Congrats, guys. You guys do good work. Thank you. Or you too. So it's a pleasure to have you on. Um, and I thought we brought you on because you're uh, a bit of an expert in ITC. You've won quite a good uh, number of tournaments and very well known on the scene, particularly in America. Uh, hoping to see you at the London DC this year. Are you coming over? I cannot confirm or nor deny. It just <laughs> depends with, um, with ETC and a lot of other big events. I'll see if I can make it over. Yep. However, uh, we will be, all of the Canadian team will be over at uh, Warhammer World the week before ETC. Oh, that's the, is that the end of the month, the end of July? That'll be at the end of July. So oh, if you guys brilliant. want to come meet us Canadians, eh? Yeah, absolutely. Well, it's <laughs> worth a trip up to Nottingham to go to Warhammer World and to see some Canadians. So that's that's right. <laughs> well, let's get straight into it then. Um, so just straight off the bat, um, I'll explain a little bit about ITC secondaries for people who aren't familiar to them. Um, so ITC is uh, the independent tournament circuit. It's very big in America. And as I mentioned, particularly in the last year, a lot of the tournaments have started doing it. I mentioned London GT there because they didn't do um, ITC last year. They did uh, a variant on the book missions. And this year they've adopted it, um, which pretty much uh, seals the deal uh, itc is here in the uk uh, and it's definitely a big part of the uk tournament circuit and it's um, here to stay so you exactly. better get used to it and start learning what it's about yeah i know that's all it is it's very simple it's a little bit daunting at first because there's quite a bit of text behind it um but that just gives it a lot of uh, detail that you can work with and a lot of balance as well and that's why it's there um, but once you've played a few games with it it is actually very simple um and we're going to talk a few ways of how to uh, get your head around it and improve your game Absolutely. So with that, picking secondaries. Indeed, yeah. So just for people that don't know, uh, when you play ITC, uh, you have uh, a number of ways uh, to score. There's primaries and secondaries. Primaries are very simple. Uh, you get a point for killing something, a point for killing more than your opponent at the end of battle rounds, a point for holding something, a point for holding more, um, and then there's a bonus to each mission. I'm not going to go into any more detail than that because we'll cover that in other videos. Um, but then the secondary scoring is the secondary missions. And this is you pick four, uh, sorry, you pick uh, four secondaries uh, before the start of the game. Um, sorry, three secondaries before the yeah. start of the game. See, I'm yeah. learning. <laughs> um, yeah. And you're allowed to score a maximum of four points against those. Um, now, you can read this all on the ITC Championship Missions Pack, uh, which you can find on the Frontline Gaming website. And I would definitely encourage you guys to read through it. And if we can, in the uh, show notes, we'll put a link to that so you guys can have easy access. Do read through it and understand it before we go into this video because we're going to just talk about general strategies rather than the specifics of how each one works. Um, they're fairly self explanatory. And this is about improving your play with those once you've got that basic knowledge. Um, so have a read through, and once you've done that, come back and listen to the rest of the video. Um, so just starting then, give us uh, some of your general strategy, Skari. Um, what do you think about when you're looking at ITC and you're stepping up to the table for a, a tournament mission? The game can be won or lost on secondaries a lot of the time in ITC. Mm -hmm. So um, it is definitely something that you as a player should really take a few minutes to kind of digest before you sort of jump in and we'll kind of get to some of the choices and like the pitfalls and things to avoid and things to kind of focus on or whatnot but i'm always looking um for things that a my army can do very well and yes secondary is also so a lot of them are like killing stuff for the enemy so they are based around what your opponent can uh give up in in that sense um however you have to be able to pick things that you can get from your opponent if you're going for that sort of like kill that is going to be easy for your army to get. So, for example, if I'm playing a, a list with a lot of Venoms and a lot of Shredders in the Venoms, even if my opponent has 10 tanks, I might not go for big game hunter if it's going to be harder for me to kill tanks, yeah. for yeah. example. Yeah. 
no i really i really agree with that um is there is there a way to sort of have an idea about uh, going into the game beforehand how many sort of kill uh, ones you should take versus the other style of ones uh, well there, way um, there are 15 secondary missions mm -hmm. And, you know, most of them are based around killing things, whether it's killing infantry, whether it's killing or models, whether it's killing tanks, whether it's killing specific things that you kind of get to pick or mark. Um, and there's two different styles of those. One's like an anti Eldar one and one's a more generic picking things to kill. Um, whether it's taking down super heavies like knights, especially with the new Chaos Knight Codex out. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, there's going to be a lot of those yeah. uh, in your general scene. So make sure you pack your Haywire guns, your Melter guns. You know, get ready to, to, to pick Titan Slayer or King Slayer against that one. We'll get to you'll You'll read those on the, on the thing. Um, but uh, um, general strategies in, in, in that sense, you know, it, it, I, there's a couple that I always pick, mm -hmm. like pretty much regardless of who I'm playing, or yep. at least, you know, and then there's like, there's some that I never pick that I don't even consider. And yep. then the other ones are mostly in gray areas and they really vary based on, you know, um, mission, deployment style, you know, that sort of stuff, or, or what style of army my opponent is running. You know, even though your opponent might have seven characters, taking King's, uh, sorry, Headhunter, which is a point for every character killed, might not be the smartest option if those characters are more support characters that can hide rather than characters that are designed to go up and be up close and personal, yeah. for example. Absolutely. Well, what I found uh, as a sort of general strategy is I try and aim to have two kind of killy ones and one that's kind of more of like a passive one or one that's in my control. Uh, so a good example of that is I'll, I'll look at the opponent's list and it may be that um, big game hunter's an obvious choice because they have a couple of tanks or yeah. you know, Derridios or whatever. Um, maybe Mark for Death is another good choice because they've got some big high power units, maybe some Demon Princes or, um, or, or Zangors or Bloodletters or something like that. Um, and then I try and take one that's, uh, as I said, passive is a bit more um, in my control. So for example, Recon is a good example of that. Engineers, yeah. Uh, things like this behind enemy lines um, yeah. so that I'm not completely going into one path because if you put everything as killing it and it's all killing different type of units that can be really difficult because essentially what you're asking is yourself can I table the opponent you know if you want to get four you know get four points on mark for death and four points on uh, on uh, big game hunter and say titan slayer you know you pretty much got to wipe your entire opponent's list to max out the score um, so it's best I felt to have something in the in the locker that you can just control yourself um, but simply that might be very hard I mean, your list might not be able to do recon uh, or behind enemy lines or something like that. Um, but when you're building your list, you can have a good think about that. So is there any adv uh, advice you would have when you're building your list and you're looking at the kind of things you're putting in to be able to, to score well, Skari? I never, personally, I don't really look at like secondaries as much when I'm building a list specifically. I try and build a list that can just deal with a variety of different opponents. So okay. I'm really looking at the meta and sort of like what's happening in the meta itself slash my own personal play style and then building a list that is based around that play style and yeah. i have found that regardless of what army i am playing i can always find the secondaries that suit that army rather than like trying to hamstring myself and playing something even though i might yeah. feel uncomfortable playing it yeah. just to take advantage of a certain secondary yeah, no, uh, that's a really, really fair comment. So you would build your list first. Once you've got your list, you'd play it a few times to work out what secondaries work in that list. Um, yeah. But I still think it's a good idea to have one or two that is something that you can do rather than just trying to decide and a lot every of them time. Are, a lot of them are racially based. So, for example, uh, you know, like Recon is a very, very friendly secondary for like Eldar or or Dark, Dark Eldar or Harlequins or any army that's super fast and speedy and can kind of be all over the table. Yeah. Um, you know, I've been playing a lot of multiple small unit Venom spam style lists where ground control has become one of my favorite secondaries. Oh, really? Which is old school grabbing objectives at the end of the game, yeah. you know, yeah. because I usually have so many little models left at the end of the game. It just yeah. takes a little bit to... It's like, <laughs> it's like fifth edition all over again, like yeah. just getting onto objectives at the end of the game. Yeah. Um, stuff, yeah. Right. Uh, so, so it just really, you know, but then again, recon might be hard for, you know, an army that likes to castle very much or, yeah. you know, that doesn't really expand their zone of influence on the table. Yeah.
Yeah, no, I understand that. One thing I've always struggled, especially when I first started playing secondaries, and this will be for a lot of the players that are listening to this that are trying to get into it, is that yeah. making the decision at the table is the hardest thing. So when you when you rock up to the table, you've got so much to think about. What you're playing, your armies, uh, what your list is good at against your opponent, what they're likely to do, threat ranges, what psychic powers you're going to take, wall of traits, relics, and then you've got to decide three bloody <laughs> secondaries as well, and you really don't know what to pick, and these are the things that are going to score you the points. Uh, it's almost the be- most important decision in, that you're going to make in that first 10-15 minutes. Um, yeah. So I found that if I can at least mitigate that to maybe just two decisions or even just one decision, you know, I'm always going to take X, I'm always going to take Y, and then I'm really just deciding on that last one. It just gives me a little bit of breathing space when I get to that table. I'm not having to make so many important decisions, um, especially and, and when so, you're under stress and you know yeah. you're you know you it's like yeah if you're working your way up the top tables, you yeah. know it's definitely good to save on brain power. Yeah, definitely. And I, and just to that effect, I, you often have enough time in between rounds when you know your opponent. As soon as that pairings come up, that's when you should be thinking about your secondaries. Looking at his list, when you're taking his list in and processing it, the first thing you should be processing is secondaries against that. And then by the time you yeah. actually set, step at the table, that, that decision should be made already. You shouldn't be making it in, in a quick snap moment. Yeah, another thing to remember a lot of people forget is secondaries are supposed to be picked in secret. You know, yeah. a lot of times people go back and forth and say, I'm going to take Reaper and I'm going to take Headhunter. And they go kind of like one and one. Yeah. Uh, technically, you're supposed to write them all down on a piece yeah. of paper and before your opponent them. reveals them and then reveal yeah. them at the same time yeah. so that your opponent's choices don't influence your choices. Yeah, yeah. But then you have people who uh, will make a decision and then you'll choose something and then they'll look at their list and go, oh, no, that's a really good one to take. Can I, can I change that? And you're exactly. like, the game hasn't even started, but, you know, <laughs> all right, fine. Um, well, what I found to that effect, though, is um, what I've built up is like a little mental library of things that I'm always going to take. So, as I said, in my mind, I try and take two killy ones and one sort of passive one. Yep. Most of the time, it's recon, although I absolutely suck at that. I need to get better at that. Um, yep. And there are some other choices there as well. It's like one of the Behind easiest them. four points you'll ever get in your life. Yeah. But honestly, well, me with Recon is uh, I take it and I go, right, I'm going to focus on it this game. That's what I'm going to do. And I've been saying that for about 15 games now. And I get to the end of the scoring and I'm marking it down. And I go, oh, Recon. Oh, I scored it. Thank God. <laughs> or no, I didn't score it. Damn it. I like that model's like six inches away. Could have easily been there. Um, yeah. But yeah, as I said, I build up like a mental library. So um, <clears throat> I know that I'm going to pick one or two, probably two killy ones. Um, and I know that against most types of lists, archetypes list or the meta lists, I've got a predetermined uh, plan. So a really simple one. I turn up, I'm facing 120 orc boys. It is no even decision. I'm obviously going to take Reaper. Um, I've got to max score it easily. Um, I'll do that against Gene Stealer, Colt, um, Tyranids if they're playing a lot of uh, you know Gaunts or uh, Gene Stealers. Anything. I mean, I took the other day against uh, a guard list which i wasn't really expecting to do but he had 60 uh he had 60 conscripts or guardsmen i can't remember what they were uh and i was like well it's easy three points he's screening with all of them i'm playing close combat army i have to get through that screen to get in i'm, I'm going to take it so i just know that as soon as i see that many models uh, that are easy to kill i'm going to take uh, the reaper uh, similarly another good choice is uh you know like titan slayer for example um if i obviously if you're playing knights um if you take titan slayer it's, it's a no-brainer obviously you're going to score that you're going to normally you're going to have to kill at least one knight in order to win the game perhaps two yeah although you know it, it, king slayer is usually a safer bet against mm. knights simply because there you can pick one knight character and uh, you only you don't even have to kill the knight in order to get full points. You have to do sixteen wounds. Yeah, d- d- King Slayer stacks with Titan Slayer. They don't. It doesn't. No, it doesn't. It doesn't so stack, to to but um, but it it means that you can get four points off of one knight, and you don't have to kill the knight as long as it's a right. character. Okay. Yeah. See, so, and and this is really important to understand, and we'll come into this in a bit more detail. Is is just the nuances. It's just knowing that you don't want to take King Slayer and, Knight, and Titan Slayer when they've only got one knight, and then be like, oh, actually, <laughs> I, can't, right. I can't score this. And exactly. you'll f- find that halfway through the game where you start marking up the scores when you finally do kill that knight, and he goes, no, you've only scored four there, not not seven. <laughs> yeah. So um yeah uh, so yeah you know, Reaper Titan Slayer the other two that are, I think are obvious um, one is Gangbusters um, so Gangbusters is a relatively new addition and I I love it I think it's mm-hmm. one of the best ones obvious things. Anything with three wounds or more, but uh, usual things are uh, Bulgrim, Hive Guard, Grotesques, um, yep. uh, Custodies. Uh, they're playing Custodies Armor. Necron Destroyers. 
yeah no quantum destroyers anything that you get it only takes one big unit i mean most of the time like a hive guard like double shooting hive guard and tyranid list is an absolute bog standard thing normally that will be max size squad so they can get the yep. most out of their strats and that's maximum uh, gangbusters and you, you should be able to kill it um and then the last one there is is butcher's bill as well so playing a list against uh, something like yourself with lots of venoms and little min squads eldar Drukari, i'm yep. definitely gonna be taking butcher's bill um tau yep. drones are a good one for that as well because they tend to have sort of two or three uh, squads of, of little drones. Depends on what style of drones they're taking. Like if they're yeah. taking lots of the small squads, yes. If yeah. they're taking some of the big ones, you know, not so much. Then it also depends on the table too, if they can hide them very well or they can't or... Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, uh, I've been playing some Pritis a, a bit recently, and he's been playing uh, his Tau Pir Piranha list, which he won um, yep. the, the Warhammer World GT with. And uh, yeah, literally every time you kill a Piranha, two two drones come out. So then you kill the two drones, and then you get your, your Butcher's Bill. Um, that's a hard list to play against anyway, not, not because of that. But uh, it's just you see these things, and you have a mental uh, library of them. You go, right, I'm playing Tau with lots of Piranhas. Obviously, I'm going to take Butcher's Bill. I'm playing Drakari, I'm going to have Butcher's Bill. That, could, that should be able to take at least one of those decisions Way. So one of the decisions is uh, is a passive thing like recon. One of the decisions is a, is a pre earmarked uh, one like as I said, Titan Slayer, uh, Reaper, Gangbusters, or Butcher's Bill. Then you've yep. only really got a decision to make about one 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 to do. And oftentimes that will be something like uh, Headhunter, old school. A lot of people take uh, King Slayer. There'll be something in there, Big Game Hunter. There'll be something that will make that last choice obvious yep. um, because of their list. And and then that then that whole decision has been made in, in a very simple process. Most of it was pre planned, and you're making one decision in the moment because oh right yeah they've got a, they've got five demon princes obviously i'm going to take uh you know headhunter or um or, or big game hunter or something like that exactly yeah um so to, let's talk about perhaps some of the nuances on a couple of these then um because we mentioned there that uh, you know some of these don't stack together and you've got to be really careful there's a little aspect correct on. you do have to make sure you understand which ones do and which ones don't yeah um so you're not trying to double up on them yeah, and, and have a good read as well, because even good players can get caught out, because they are some of them are fairly uh, recent uh, additions. Um, you know, I think they've just brought in that uh, Know Your Poison one. Um, and, and that, you know, yes. you can easily, pick you your can poison. easily take that. Yeah, pick your poison, yeah. You know, that's a relative new one. It's a bit nuanced. It's the NTL, that one. Things. Yeah, although, um, you know, it's good against Chaos as well. Um, I yeah. found there's, there's quite a few ones there. But it works like Mark for Death, so you have to pick your, your units. Um, and it's very easy to pick something going, right, I'm going to kill that with my with my you know, demon prince for example with psycho fly and monster it's like all right okay i'm definitely going to get one of those so i'll pick that and then you look at your other choices and then you come back and realize actually that was the only one that had fly and psycho so you can't score both and you have to pick one that you're going to score and then you have a problem yeah. so it is really important i think the the key to this segment of this video is just read <laughs> reread read, read make sure you and also make sure you understand when they can be scored because yeah. for example something like gangbusters mm -hmm. um uh, Butcher's Bill, sorry. Butcher's Bill, which is kill any two things in any player turn. Mm -hmm. So even if you kill six things in one turn, that's one point. Yeah. However, if you kill two things in your turn, shooting in close combat, for example, you get a point. And if you were to kill two things in your opponent's turn, say in Overwatch and in close combat or something like that, you would also get a point. Mm -hmm. So something like that can be a lot faster to get four points than you yeah. think yeah. If you're planning accordingly, like trying to kill stuff in your opponent's turn, like moving in, trapping it, like hugging a unit to stop from falling back, then in their turn, killing them in close combat. And if you do that twice, that's a point in their turn, plus whatever you killed in your turn. Yeah, that's, so, that's a great example. That's a perfect example of understanding the nuance and using that to maximize. And, you know, we do a lot of videos here. We talk a lot about this kind of thing. Um, and this is what separates good players from, from your average player is that a good player will be able to do that. And he'll be maxing that in the first, you know, two, three turns and then doesn't have to think about it for the rest of the game. Um, so, and it's not hard to do. He's not losing efficiency generally. He's, you know, he's yeah. going to kill that in the same phase. He's just, he doesn't do it now. He does it in the next phase. It makes absolutely no difference in the game, but it's just scored him an extra point, which he doesn't have to think about. Um, because what I found a lot being new to ITC myself, uh, I've been playing it for about a year now, is that uh, it's so important to overkill stuff. You know, I, I, I play the three Derrideos, for example, the amount of times I end up shooting all of my Derrideo shots into I don't know, 10 more guard squad just to get that kill more, so I know yep. that I've got it. And I'm, I'm wasting butcher cannon shots on, on individual guardsmen, but, you know, I have to. That's what gives me the kill more, that's what gives me the, the uh, you know, the, the secondary. It's two or three points uh, swing, it's worth it. So if I'm having to do that in later turns, because 
because I didn't maximize my scores early on, then I'm not being the most efficient player of my firepower. And that really should be going into that night, but I'm having to do it to get up that butcher's bill. Otherwise, I'm not going to get it this turn. You know, that's yeah. the kind of thing that's really important. So. Exactly. Okay. Um, I think the other thing just to that effect, so one of the last nuances that I thought so when we tried to chat about this before is just behind enemy lines. Um, I used to take this a lot when I was playing uh, three Hellblades um, because yep. you just chuck them out there and then you get it, get every turn. But you've got yep. to remember that that scored at the beginning of your next movement phase, not at the end of your turn, which means that yep. whatever you put into the opponent's deployment zone has to live a turn. Yep. And things like that are really important because if you're playing against a good player and as you get through the better tables and as you get towards the top tables, they will be playing better players and they'll understand that they'll know that their entire game plan has got to be to kill that unit that you put into their deployment zone even if it's not again the most efficient choice it's the thing that's going to score you the points and i i, I always got a bit of concern about that because you give up your control so like a, a recon is a passive one that you score at the end of your turn you do your movement your, your opponent has almost zero interaction in that and that yeah. will score you the as long as your guys are touching spots on the battlefield you get the point so you exactly. just have to move into position yeah um and on that point as well, it's important to note if you do take things like behind enemy lines or uh, king of the hill or uh, you know recon or things that are, are based on t the turn number going on, you have to understand that you know you better be finishing four six yeah. turns. You know, like that th those are four points that you're putting on the line. And if your game only goes to three turns and you didn't get it on the first turn, yeah. then you get two points because you got it on the second and say third turn, and then the game ends on turn four and and you didn't get that fourth yeah. point or third point and that could be the difference between winning or losing so yeah. either play with a chess clock or make sure that you are pl getting the time that you need to get all those points yeah i, I do i see it's a really interesting point that and that speaks widely of the game anyway um because in the uk because it's a relatively new thing we're not using chess clocks very often um i certainly haven't been to any tournaments so i've seen you know, chess clocks used that are certainly not enforced um and you know the good players will go through their games of course but uh, certainly when you're in the middle table and you're, you're, you're rising up you know you play against people slow they want to have a chat you know they don't quite know their army they're looking up stats and, and that game is going to take longer you, the thing is that if you want to do well you have to be scoring very highly you know that's what yeah. gets you playing against the better players and that's what gets you going well you need to be you know getting over 25 points moving towards the 35 40 points in every game to really succeed particularly in you know one day rtts where you're just playing three rounds and yep. so if your game only goes to turn two turn three this is impossible to score that many points even if you're absolutely crushing your opponent you have to be going to turn five turn six turn seven um and so you know picking uh, like you say you've got to be understanding your game management if you rock up to the table and the person's asking you everything under the sun about how to play their list maybe think man i won't take week on this game because i'm not sure we're actually going to get to turn yeah. five because it's or take slow. something like uh, you know ground control where yeah. you if you have the you know you can jump onto objectives at the end of the game if the game doesn't go to full full time yeah. or something like that you know yeah absolutely yeah. Yeah, and that, I mean, that's probably a better, it's particularly in a five round GT, turn one, turn two, if you, especially if you don't score well in the first game, it's maybe you play against a good player and it's a tr tough match, you just yeah. scrape a victory. The first round, the second round is when you're going to be playing against the worst players, and that's most likely when you're going to be having the longer games. Um, and so, yeah, I would. that's a great piece of advice. You probably feel like you're going to dominate the player anyway. Take ones that allow you to max your score, because the amount of times that you end up coming fourth instead of third because yep. it's two points difference in the secondaries and that was yep. because your first game only went to turn two and <laughs> and his game went to turn five but he just didn't have a good game so yeah I really interesting point there i like that scary that's really good um okay let's uh talk about forcing yourself into a, a, a single dimensional play um and, and not playing the mission because i think this is a really important part when you're playing the game for the most part, um, ITC is very balanced. You know, it's it's kill, it's hold, it's kill more, hold more, and then some bonuses. It's so all you can part, do with uh, little toy soldiers. Yeah. Kill things, so, hold things. Exactly. That's it. Exactly. <laughs> um, so, so it works really well when it's balanced in it, and there's yeah. even weighting to both things, and, and that's why it's taking off in the competitive scene. Um, but the secondary is a way you start creating a, a game plan for yourself, um, and you've got to be looking, you know, there is the general meta of if you're playing against, you know, a, a a castle of Tau that they're going to play in a certain play style that's going to generally give you board control so what you want to be doing i found is that you want to be picking secondaries that are going to match up with what you want to do anyway so yeah. if you're playing as Tau, you're probably uh, let's say you're playing close combat chaos army which is what i play a lot of you, you're going to be wanting to get board control you're going to be wanting to keep them in a clump and you're going to be want to hit them hard and try to crack that nut open if you're doing that you don't want to be picking missions that are going to hold you you know um 
sorry, secondaries that are going to hold you back from doing that primary mission because that's kind of how you win the game. If you don't yeah. do that mission and you just pick loads of like hold points or hold various bits of the table, you're just going to get blown away and then you're not going to yeah. hold anything by turn two. Um, so have you got any advice to that effect, Scary? Yeah, uh, likewise, effects? you know, if, if I'm playing, I, you know, I, I show up with six Venoms and a couple of Ravagers to a table and somebody's brought three Crest Crusaders and a Helverin, mm -hmm. you know, I'm not exactly going to be jumping up and trying to kill them i'm going to try and hide and stay alive as long as possible which means yeah. a lot of my objectives will be something like ground control where i can yeah. keep one cavalite warrior alive out of line of sight for as long as i can just to get onto an objective at the end of the game yeah. so to yes i i definitely you know make choices in terms of objectives and gameplay based on the matchup itself yeah, yeah, you know, can I survive till that late? You know, how will I do it? Yeah. Um, is it going to be a me rushing them and trying to get as many points early, or is it going to be me trying to hide and then spring to get points later in the game? Yeah, yeah, and actually, you know, that's an interesting strategy. I mean, we're talking very sort of top level play here, but you know, playing against something like three knights, uh, they, they tend to really put the punishment on it it can be quite hard to get the momentum and win that game so uh, a way to just stall out the game you know keep a lot of stuff in deep strike keep it hidden bring everything in turn three the latest time you could bring it in and then max score points in two turns turn four turn five of ground control um, and then let them you know destroy you off the back of that they aren't going to score very much in that very last turn so it's what they can score in the early turns and knights aren't very good at scoring so there's a general overarching strategy there that could actually win you the game in a matchup that you are going to get blown off the table <laughs> there's no advantage exactly. You, can you know, that game. I can normally tell you know, if, if 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 you're like Brandon Grant, you know, who won LVO with you know a couple of guardsmen left on the table. You know, that's the that's the difference between someone who has been playing the mission and who understands the the, the like nuance of one or two points. Yeah. You know, because you don't need your entire army left alive to win the game. You just yeah. need to have scored more points than your exactly. opponent. Exactly. And that's where the secondaries are absolutely key because if you've picked the wrong secondary, if you picked one that you just couldn't do, or you picked one that you, you know, let's go, you, you go with the gold or the old crutch of old school, right? And you're Or engineers. Nice. Yeah. Like I've seen people pick engineers and then lose their engineers on like turn one or yeah. something because it was just like, you know, oh, I'm going to pick engineers and you have an entire army yeah, that can shoot fire stuff out or, of line yeah. You know, so, and now you've lost all your engineers and all of a sudden you're four points down. Like yeah. just cannot score four points that game. Absolutely. But this is what we're talking about here. We're talking about how you know, how do you avoid one dimensional strats? And that's exactly that. So if you if your four points rely on, you know, a squad of nerglings or something that's holding an objective and they've got a hell of a lot of indirect fire a couple of derridios whatever it is knight with the iron storm or whatever you know they ain't going to be there and your, your opponent will know that your strategy entirely revolves around this unit just sat there and not dying there's nothing you can do to affect that you're locked into that strategy and your opponent knows that and can abuse it um yeah. the other way is to flip it around the other side when you're picking your strategy so we mentioned this in the last video but if you pick something your opponent knows that you've picked that and they can then affect that. So if you've, uh, the example we used in the last uh, video was uh, Manny Chimu who's been playing with Bolgren in an Imperial Guardler army. And, uh, you know, it's an obvious choice for gangbusters that we just mentioned. And it makes an easy choice for your opponent. Like, look, look at the table. Oh, he's got uh, Bolgren. All right, uh, they're obviously very important. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pick gangbusters. And then what Manny Chimu does is he just sticks it in a, you know, magic box or puts it in some ruins at the back of the table. Doesn't use it for the whole game. Yeah, okay, a couple hundred points blown, not really using. But yeah. four points denied from your opponent because you've got a one-dimensional strategy and that's what he does exactly um, and it's the same thing with um you know characters or taking headhunter you know that there's a lot of lot to be said in not only you have to pick the right secondaries but understanding what your opponent will do based on your picking of those secondaries especially if they're ones that they now have control over like if i pick headhunter and you've got five characters you know now you have control of whether or not you're going to expose those yeah. points to me yeah. right um unless i have like a million snipers or a way to get back there and kill your characters mm. um so you can play that point denial which is a whole other video all in of itself <laughs> of how to you know just destroy your opponent based on the objectives they took because yeah. you're den denying them as many points as possible yeah. Absolutely. Well, I think that's one we'll have to bring you back for, Skari, because that's a very interesting chat. Um, I, I just, just, I'll leave a, a little note there for that discussion. Pardon with when you're doing when you're picking the secondaries could also be to force your opponent in force their hand. So, for example, um, when I played Simon's Orcs recently, um, so this is Simon Pritis uh, again. Mm -hmm. he's been playing 
probably over 100 <laughs> tournament games with his orcs now and winning quite a lot. Um, his uh, his warlord is a guy on a bike with a um, reroll all hits and wounds with damage four weapon. It's absolutely yep. the head boss super killer claw. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's absolutely disgusting. And you know, against Lord yep. Discordance, it just rips them to shreds. Against Derek, it just rips them to shreds. Well, I, I pick that as the Kingslayer because then you know he has a choice, right? That Max Kingslayer for me. He if he wanted to, he could hold that back and deny me the four points. But also, but it's helps really you in important. the long run. It was exactly. I would way rather <laughs> yeah. him do that. He's probably never going to do it. He's always going to throw it forwards. But you know, it just forces your opponent to choose. You know, maybe he gets it down to one wound, and he goes, "All right, I'm not going to suicide the next round. I'm actually going to dive it back." And that gives me a you know a turn to to live because I've forced your, my opponent to sort of start thinking about that. So yeah, I just we'll, we'll talk about that more in the in, if we do another video like that. But, Absolutely. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of play in in, in the secondaries, and, and getting used to them is really good. Um, but this soon we're just starting more at the basic level. Um, so one of the last things I want to come into then is is just talking about what I call the the easy three versus the risky four. Um, yeah. I find myself with this conundrum all the time, and I'm sure a lot of people can relate. I sit look at the table and I go, okay, like uh, okay, he's got. 60 guardsmen and a couple of knights and you know a bunch of tanks and stuff and i go oh, so the 60 guardsmen are super easy i've got loads of heavy bowers and uh, and indirect fire and i can pretty much pick up 10 to 20 a turn no problem i want to be doing that because they're screening off the big units that i want to be getting to so they're part of my standard mission plan which is what we've already discussed so it's really obvious to me that i should take that but i can only score three points against it because he's only got 60 models so if i take reaper i've got an easy easy uh, three points on reaper Versus the risky four. Well, he might have, you know, two or three knights. Oh, can I get, you know, the fourth knight on Titan Slayer? Or he might have, a, as I said, a squad of Bolguin, but I, I, I don't know if he's going to be playing them objectively and he could actually end up just hiding those. Yeah. So you're always in this decision. What do you go for, Skari? Do you go for the easy three or do you take the risky four? So because, as you well know, most of the things in this game are completely relative to everything else. <laughs> yes, <laughs> it's, very it's a hard nuanced to give game. <laughs> exact answers yeah. or very black and white answers to any sort of topic. However, I will normally go for the easy three if and only if I can deny more than one point to my opponent. Oh, okay. Interesting. Okay, because you add that extra layer on there. I need to... Yeah, I'll get the easy points. That's, that's going to be very easy for me mentally, physically, when I'm going through game plans, that sort of thing. But if my opponent can get 12 points mm -hmm. and I can... And I know he, he's going to... I can't deny him those 12 points. And I am only going to get 11 points. Mm -hmm. Right? Then it puts a lot more pressure on the primary objectives of the game that can be very swingy. Kill, hold more, that sort of thing. So you know, if I can you know, make sure he doesn't max out on his headhunter, or I can make sure that he, you know, he, he can't get his engineers, or if I make sure that he doesn't get that behind enemy lines, or if I can make sure he doesn't get those two points, yeah. then I'm very comfortable taking the easy three. Okay. Uh, it's a really interesting reasoning for the same answer that I have. Um, and I, I, I see that. Um, my, my opinion generally is, is kind of twofold on this. First of all, I, 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 struggle you know myself if i give myself a hard risky choice um I, I generally don't make it i generally try and play too much around it and it forces my game plan into something i don't want to do so yeah. if that risky four is like totally in light, right i have to kill the castellan in order to win the game but i don't quite have enough shooting to kill the castellan you know i might still go for the castellan because if i don't i'm going to lose the game anyway so like yeah. you know that's what you're saying it's nuanced um but you know for the most part i play low risk medium reward <laughs> um and i feel, always feel like the risky four is is for the most part is going to be a high risk high reward strategy and i think yeah. with, in a game of rng that's the kind of thing that's going to throw you um so my my mentality is around that i don't want to force myself to play a style that i don't want to do and i want to be taking the low risk choices where they're where they're available to me because it doesn't always work out um but no i think your your point's quite quite clear on that um this then ties back, and I think we can just sort of round off the, the video with this. It just ties back to the primaries, and it ties back to what your overall mission plan is. You know, we, we say this in almost every video we do. You've got to be playing the mission. Well, when you're determining your secondaries, you're determining what the mission is, and you're going to be putting yeah. that points to make sure that lines up with other things. If you've got a, when you're building your army, like you've described at the beginning of the video, you're building your army to win the game. You know, really, it should be an army that can, you know, can kill the things that it needs to kill. It has the yeah. tools to deal with the things it needs to deal with. So you're Secondary should be in line with that, um, but it's it's really important to understand that I think the primaries for me have always been the most important um, because if you can be scoring more than your opponent on the primaries, the secondaries are least and less important, and that's why they're primary and secondary. So if you're focusing on kill more, if you're focusing on hold more, you're getting multiple swings like that. You just described that in a situation where you know 
if you might take an easy three if you can deny your opponent one or two um, and that's really coming to the primary side of things for me I'd rather be scoring primaries where I'm gonna get kill one and kill more and mean that my opponent won't be getting his kill one and therefore it's a three-point swing because in that way if I've made a bad decision on the secondaries or I, my opponent's been very clever like you would have done and denied me that some way I'm winning on the primaries so yeah. I still make sure that you focus your game plan on the primaries don't worry yourself too much about the secondaries they'll come with experience um, but you know take advice of what we said here and, and read through the books and play get some play uh, practice time with it and that part of the game will come up uh, quite quickly you'll find yeah practice it, practice practice indeed any closing comments go don't be afraid to try secondaries that you are wary about mm, yeah. you know like don't be afraid to try new things because you'd be surprised uh you know yeah. sometimes a secondary that you've never seen before that you've never tried before could be one that just suits your play style very nicely so yeah. Don't, well, you, you don't sorry, you just afraid. you just mentioned uh, ground control there. I mean, I've never picked ground control. I've never, I've always considered it to be too risky. But then I, like you say, though, I normally, especially in games which are going to go on in the early rounds, you know, I actually find myself in a really advantageous position, but not getting the maximum scores that I could do. So you just mentioned something that I'm going to try out. I think that's uh, that's quite interesting. Yeah, definitely. You know, go out there and and try things, especially if like if you're the kind of player that's that's in contention to win an event, and you know, uh, if you go five and zero, oh, you'll win the event, or three and zero, oh, and you and you lose a game. You know, the game after that, like take a deep breath and try something different. You know, use yeah. it as like a practice game. Yeah, yeah, and and you'll find you know you still want to be going for max scores, but you're in a more relaxed environment. You're gonna you're gonna yeah. do well. Um, yeah, I I think when you say you know practice, 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 and, and that's exactly what it is. When you're practicing things and you're working on your list, you'll try a unit, you'll try a different unit. You should be doing that with your secondaries as well. You, very very good advice there. I mean, for me, I I used to take recon all the time, and yeah. I used to build my list around taking recon. But yeah. then I found myself in too many games just not thinking about it till it's too late, and I just decided for myself as a player, either I practice, practice, practice recon which is what i'm doing now or yep. i just don't make it part of my plan because i'm just not doing it well um so you know that comes from trying recon and then not trying it trying engineers and not trying it you know and just mi mixing up and trying different things and seeing what works for you for his player two people can play the same list and they'll pick completely different secondaries because just they're different types of players and and they'll be able to score those or not score those better um so yeah that's, that's good advice i agreed yeah this is a great uh, topic as well so if you guys have any questions comments concerns leave them down in the the comments mm -hmm. and we'll get to them we read yeah. them and you guys read them and i go over them as well when i'm on a video because yeah. i like to answer questions too yeah definitely i always try and make sure i read everything i try and respond as much as possible um i, I do myself like to give really detailed responses so i generally just pick mm -hmm. one or two and get very detailed responses rather than little one liners to everybody um but uh, yeah keep it keeping we're a big community here of players and very interested to hear your thoughts on secondaries as well so i think we'll leave it there thank you so much for coming on again scary really appreciate it yeah no appreciate problem. it it's been a great video see you later guys bye bye